ladies and gentlemen, is uh, brought to you by uh, the Patriots of Act 746. Uh, they are on a mission to educate the state of Arkansas on the benefits of uh, your Second Amendment rights, specifically Act 746 and constitutional carry. We are a constitutional carry state, although some people in the executive branch uh, define constitutional carry, uh, I don't know, uh, as if they hadn't have read a dictionary uh, wrongly. Um, but anyway, welcome uh, back to the program. Good friend Dan Borum is back with us. Always a treat to have Dan on the program. Dan, welcome back, sir. Hey, good morning, Paul, and good morning to all the Patriots out there this morning. Absolutely. Um, so let's start with what we were just, what I just uh, read in the last segment that was on our Facebook feed. We were talking about how the Supreme Court ruling says that essentially the state has sovereign immunity because they read the text of the 1874 Arkansas Constitution plainly. They read the text and it said the the state of Arkansas shall never be a defendant in any of her courts. Never. So what so and so what Gary on Facebook was just saying was, well if the courts are going to read that that part plainly, why not read Article 2 Section 5 uh, plainly as well? Which is, uh, you know, that's the the part of the, the document that has to do with, uh, you know, uh, yes. you know, defending ourselves, having guns. Article Article Two, Section Five says the citizens of this state shall have the right to bear arms for their common defense. All right, folks, if that's what you're going to do, if that's how you're going to play, then let's go all the way down the line with it. But they won't, and they'll protect themselves. What Gary said is absolutely correct, but I guarantee you. They will not do that. Mm -hmm. but, well, well, and the only way to change that is for us is for us to keep getting our voices louder and louder and louder. Uh huh. Well, yeah. If you go with a plain reading, I mean, it's that's it's it's pretty. It, but see, the difference here is this would be more power back to the people. Um, yeah. The state having sovereign immunity is the state maintaining its authority over us, over the citizens. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, right here, section five, uh, article two, section five, the citizens of this state shall have the right to keep and bear arms for their common defense. There we go. Right. Uh, it doesn't say anything about having to get a permission slip, uh, or having to get an enhanced permission slip or having to do any of that stuff. It doesn't say anything about that. Uh, and so here we are, we're kind of at a, at a crossroads, I guess. Well, look, look, Paul, <clears throat> history, history always repeats itself and especially if you do not study history i'm i'm in a very interesting study right now i'm preparing myself to be able to teach my daughter in homeschool on the uh, constitution and going all the way back into uh, rome uh back into uh, great britain the uh federalist papers the uh, house of commons the parliament and how all of that played into setting up our constitution and i'm learning so much myself and, um, you know, I was kind of surprised. I, I'd heard this before, but I'd never really read it in a, in a good, sound history book, how that a lot of the colonists, I want you to think about this, a lot of the colonists, when you break it down percentage, there were only 20% of the colonists who were patriots. 15% were loyalists, meaning they remained loyal to the crown. And 65% didn't give a hoot. They were indifferent. They could care less. As long as it wasn't bothering me mm -hmm. or affecting me, I don't care. And we are, we are right back in that same boat. When you look out here, let's just look at the state of Arkansas. Let's just look at the, the percentage of those who are doing their best to hold government accountable and to, and to make them put their nose down to the grindstone and to read the plain English, such as in Acts 746. Mm -hmm. There's very few, and when you try to talk to others about it, they just shrug their soldiers, uh, shoulders like they could care less, and they really don't even want you bothering them with it. Mm -hmm. yep. and Or they just make jokes about it. Yep. But And then there's that 15% that are the loyalists, Brother, they're going to protect the crown. They don't care if it what kind of lies involved. They don't care what, uh, how much distortion. They don't care how much money they rob. They're going to protect the crown no matter what. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, it, it, you're you're speaking the truth. Uh, I, I specifically the ones you know. Okay, well they'll just make jokes about it. You know that yeah. that's kind of that that infuriates me because you know I I study this stuff like you do, and I'm like, are you just making jokes about it because you you don't understand? You don't want to uh, you want you don't want to attempt to understand? I mean the the apathy. You know people will do anything to kind of avoid uh, the the guilt <laughs> maybe that they would feel saying, okay, this, you know, freedom for your kids is really on the line here. When government grows, liberty shrinks. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's like a universal principle. Um, and I, 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 I can't help but also say, Dan, that these people down there, you know, at the Marble Palace, if, if you just look at how they protect the system uh, for what we've become, you just think, gosh, some of these guys would have been redcoats all the way. All the way they'd have been redcoats. Redcoat to the core. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they are redcoats. They, they, are, they are so loyal to the crown, figuratively speaking. They refuse to represent their constituents. They represent the crown rather than their constituents. What we have to do for those who are the patriots, and I'm not just saying patriots of Act 746. I mean are Kansans who believe in small government, true constitutional government, then we have got to quit. We have got to get out of that apathetic stage. You know what, Paul? To educate yourself is work. It is. It's work. When I read these books, I have to, there's things I have to read it over and over and over, trying to grasp the context of, what our forefathers were doing and what they were talking about. And it involves time and it involves work. It, it involves thought. And, you know, like King Solomon said, much study is awareness to the flesh. Hmm. And it is. And it's easier to be indifferent than to have to put your gray matter to work and figure out what's going on. Wow. That's really good. I mean, that's extremely well put. It is easier just to kind of float through life i guess and uh it is. just kind of become that's, part of the system and that's what a lot of people are doing and you know there there's some things i have a wonderful wife and she you know miss kathy keeps me at bay she she reminds me all the time daniel paul you are a preacher be careful what you say be careful how you say it uh, all right she knows how blunt i am but you know Sometimes we just need to be blunt. Sometimes we just got to put it out there right on the line, exactly how it is. And the thing is, I've never had a problem as a pastor calling out those who take the scriptures and twist the scriptures to line their pockets, to make money using God, using people to fill their coffers, their false prophets. And we have the same in Arkansas in the political realm and it goes all the way down to many of the concealed handgun carry license instructors who are still lying to the people using fear tactics to keep their pockets lined. We have others who teach those classes who tell the truth, telling them, hey, yes, I can do this for you. You can go through the training. I can sign this piece of paper so you can get your permit. But I'm telling you, you don't have to have it in the state of Arkansas. There are some good ones out there, but there are, I'm still seeing it all over Facebook. These people who are still telling people, you have to have your permit to carry concealed or you are breaking the law. And it scares people. And so rather than taking the chance, they're still doing it and they are still lining their pockets. And those people infuriate me. Hmm. Yeah. Um, that's gosh, Dan. I mean, and, and we've been conditioned. So many of us have been conditioned. So you say the, the concealed handgun instructors, just to kind of point this out, the ones that do say, Hey, you don't, you don't really have to have this. Uh, just to remind everybody, some people like the advantage of having one. So you sure. can, so you can have the reciprocity with the States around us, you know, uh, so you can carry outside of Arkansas. Uh, and of course, right. some people are bypassing the Ark. They're so upset with the Arkansas State Police and the the status quo here that they're getting an Arizona concealed handgun license because it's uh, reciprocal here in Arkansas. That's right. That's right. You know, for a quick for a quick example, I saw a, a lady on Facebook the other day. She made a post that uh, she had a man stalking her at the Revenue Office in Fort Smith, just off Phoenix Avenue. And uh, it was kind of a scary situation for her. 
and she was posting about it, and she was posting about uh, needing needing some protection. And I told her, I said, ma'am, go and purchase yourself a weapon. If you do not know how to use a handgun, find a friend or take a class to instruct you on the proper use of a handgun and keep that with you for protection at all times. You know, ladies, men, they, people should not be out there feeling vulnerable to these people who are stalkers and thieves and robbers. And when I told her that, a man came swooping in and said, I have a concealed carry class going on tomorrow if you would like to come. And so I came back and I said, ma'am, you can get a weapon right now and carry concealed without a permit in the state of Arkansas. And the man rebuked me. He told me I was not telling the truth. I told him I was telling the truth. And then the lady told me that if I couldn't be nice, don't say anything at all on her post. And so I excused myself. I told her I'm sorry, and I would not comment anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought the masses remain ignorant. Yeah, indifferent. Ignorance is fine. Yeah, ignorance is fine if you want to be educated. But then there are some that are just indifferent. Don't rattle the boat. Don't shake the boat. Leave it alone. Yeah. So let's can we let's back up just a second because I I really want I really want to conceptualize this twenty percent who were patriots back in the eighteenth century, fifteen percent who were uh, essentially the status quo protectors, the red coat loyalists, or red coats themselves. And then the rest, the rest just didn't care. So they didn't care because it wasn't affecting them at the moment. And, and I, listen, I want to be clear. I, I'm not calling for you know revolution in in terms of you know the the, the type of uh, you know the American Revolution, but exactly. I do want elected officials that have a, such a reverence for the liberty that was secured back then. And I yeah. I'd like to ask them, would you sign? That Declaration of Independence would would you have put your name on there? Would you have would you have put you know John Hancock? You know he he made it larger just so it was kind of more like a more of an offense because he was wanted everywhere you know for smuggling right. and stuff. So I I guess my point is I I just really doubt that many of the people who are down there who just protect the status quo they prevent the change the people are voting for over and over and over again. Uh, in, 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 instead, they vote for special interests. I don't think they would ever sign that document. I, I don't think they'd ever put their names on it. And that's uh, that's very concerning to me when, you know, you think about how precious our freedoms are. Exactly. And remember, when the Constitution, when they finalized it the first time, it was not ratified. Mm-hmm. It was not ratified until when, Paul? That- until they included the Bill of Rights until they amended right. with Bill of Rights, and then it was ratified, and I guarantee you we have some in the Marble Palace. They have proven by their very own actions they would not have signed it on the second round because it had the Bill of Rights there. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when it, when it limits your power, uh, and that's the thing. And look, I know we're talking in, in really large, you know, giant hypotheticals. You know, that was then, this is now. Mm-hmm. But it, but it's, but you, you know, you're judged by, I judge them by their actions. I call them out by their actions most of the time because their actions are, are the opposite of what they said on the campaign trail. And, uh, you know, there's some in the elite today, there's some at the Marvel Palace today that, that view this entire discussion that we're having as sensationalists. Don't worry about it. America's never going to, you know, uh, uh, take away people's freedoms and liberties, but they, we, we already are. And they just kind of dismiss this as some oh. sort of, you know, uh, you know, nostalgic hero worship of the way things used to be. And what and, and that's the mentality where, you know, our, our, our kids or grandkids, you know, wake up and, you know, instead of <laughs> instead of the TSA uh, searching you when you go on an airplane about, you know, putting their hands down your pants, we now have you right. know, even more invasive searches. And that's how this stuff works. And there and you can see this in like that's every correct. every aspect of our lives. Hey, it, folks, it, it's it's very common knowledge that if you don't, if you do not study history and learn from history, 
history is bound to repeat itself, and we are the ones who put our representatives in office to support the republic, to represent us, and if we don't study history, and if we're people that just goes down in the voting booth and looks for the R or the D, then you're the problem. Go- That's exactly right. Government must be attended to, uh, and we need an educated electorate. Dan Borum with Patriots of Act 746. Uh, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for uh, dropping some truth on the program today. Hey, thanks for having me, Paul, and I hope you all have a great day. Yes, sir. You too. Good morning to you, folks. We're going to take a break. Back in just